Hey there YouTube, this is SGM4306 and I have a, another video. Uh, this will be a pretty quick one. Uh, I, To be honest, I've actually filmed this once before and I don't know what happened to the footage. <laughs> so yeah, I had this uh, sitting in the wings and you know, I, was, I, I edited it and everything, had it ready to go and now I can't find the video file. So yeah, uh, this is my second time through. Anyway, so I've shown this before. This is my uh, Sony Network Walkman N NWHD1. It's a 20 gigabyte MP3 player, well, A-Track 3 player. Uh, there was an option available where you could send this into Sony um, and they would uh, pretty much change the circuit board and make it MP3 compatible. But I have a original unmodified unit, so this guy only plays A-Track uh, audio, unfortunately. But Whatever, not that big of a deal. Anyway, it's an amazing sounding player. The UI is kind of meh. But uh, biggest limitation, I think, is a 20 gig hard drive. It's really small, actually. but So it takes uh, kind of the iPod-like hard drives. Unfortunately, though, it um, takes kind of the older type with the pins. So uh, the limitation on those are they only go up to about 40 gigabytes in the single platter, which this will only fit a single platter, platter because it's so small. But here I have a uh, a small single platter Ziff style um, iPod hard drive, and this guy's 80 gigabytes, so four times the memory capacity of this. And I bought this adapter, and this is a Ziff to uh, you know the CF style pin uh, ATA connector. And so this will actually convert the um, you know the Ziff hard drives, which are actually cheaper and have higher capacity anyway, uh, to the style used by this guy here. So I just had this on charging. So we'll take this off and I'll open this up and we'll get to switching the hard drives and seeing uh, the process of getting this to work. Because unfortunately, as I said before, I've already filmed this so I know this works, but it was actually really exciting the first time because as far as I know, no one's ever done this type of mod on, on these players because they're pretty rare to begin with. And as far as I know, no one uses them anymore. So this will be pretty much the world's first, um, you know, high capacity uh, network Walkman mod. So yeah, just let's uh, get this open. I'll fast forward through this part and be back to you once it's done. Okay, so we're finally in. You can see this old style hard drive has uh, all these pins at the end here. And this adapter pretty much replicates them. There are a few extra pins, uh, actually no, it replicates all of them. Yeah, from what I remember though, like the last four pins or something on this side aren't actually used, but anyway, or either that or they're redundant and like there are extra power pins. Anyway, you can see already that uh, this hard drive is quite a bit smaller actually, about the, th the same thickness, maybe a little bit thinner. So that's why you can actually do this mod, though we're going to probably have to do away with this uh, rubber uh, film, unfortunately, just because I don't think there's enough room. Anyway, this is the MK2004 GAL. GAL refers to the fact that there's a single platter. If it were GAH, that would be double platter. And the two, 2004, the, the two zero refers to the fact that it's a 20 gigabyte drive. This guy is a different hard drive. That's a Toshiba. This is a Samsung. And this is the HS081HA, and this is the drive that came in the 6th uh, and maybe 7th gen. Uh, I, I know for sure I pulled this from a 6th gen iPod Classic. Uh, so this is the 80 gigabyte drive, also single platter. And one thing to know is this is a lot quieter than these old drives. Like this is whisper quiet. Here you can actually hear the drive spin up. Uh, so... Additionally, this drive takes 500 milliamps, a new one will take 400, so this will actually give you better battery life, be quieter, and give you a lot more memory than the old drive, so this is an upgrade in pretty much every way imaginable. So one thing to note is uh, we want to put this drive in the same way that it, it, it came out. So uh, there's a 50-50 chance I get this right. It won't damage anything, I believe, as long as you're quick about it, you don't leave it powered on if it doesn't work but I believe it goes in like this. So we'll just plug this in and do a quick power up test to make sure it'll all still work. 
So we want to align pin one here, just like that. And I needed to cut off their little ears on either side of this adapter. I had to cut them off with a pocket knife uh, to fit them in because, well, yeah, <laughs> that's just the way it was. Um, because this adapter wasn't made to be used with like these iPod drives. They're actually made for, I'm not sure exactly what, but yeah, it wouldn't actually have worked. So just as a quick test, I'm going to put some insulating material down. Okay, I just heard it spin up. And there we go, hard drive not initialized correctly. So what we are going to want to do is go into menu, and then we will go down all the way down to format. And we'll go to initialize hard disk. Say okay, all tracks will be deleted, okay. And it will go through and it will take a little bit of time, probably about a minute for this hard drive. It depends on the size, obviously. But yeah, this is gonna go through and I'll fast forward through this bit. Oh, there we go, didn't even take a minute and it finished right there. So we're going to shut this off. Yep, oh, wrong button. So yeah, let's hit this again. And now flip this over and let's properly try to insulate this and get this back in. So I almost wonder, will it fit with the original rubber bumper? So let's try that. Okay, yeah. So what I ended up having to do is remove the rubber bumper. So this isn't going to nearly have as much shock protection. So you're going to have to be more careful when using... Well, I'm going to have to be more careful when using this. Um, but that'll be fine since I actually use this at home more often than not. I just want to make sure that this is cleared. There we go. Yeah, I mostly use this um, docked because it, it sounds absolutely great for uh, high bitrate audio. But the kind of limiting feature is that the the menu navigation is absolutely horrible. It's horrible finding a song if, if you know, you don't have it built into one of the uh, uh, playlists and whatnot. Anyway, so I'll turn on my monitor, get this going. I can barely hear the hard drive. The other one, I can actually hear it spinning from this far away from, from me. Anyway, you can see it's linked up to the computer and we'll give it a second and hopefully Sonic Stage will not crash. Okay, so in Sonic Stage, this is the error message I get. So checking if any tracks were deleted because it detects that like kind of, I guess it knows the serial number of the hard drive. So it detects that I removed the original hard drive and there's some foreign hard drive in there. So it kind of, for safety, for copyright and whatnot, it, it tries to delete all the music. So anyway, we can see right here, it shows up as a track audio device E, and it shows up as free 74.5 gigabytes. So the firmware within this player will actually accept an 80 gigabyte hard drive. I, I would love to check one of like the 120 uh, gigabyte single platters, or I think they have maybe even larger than that. Maybe they might have a 160 single platter, which would be awesome to check. But anyway, 80 is good enough for now. Okay, so now since I have such a large hard drive, um, why not go all the way and transfer at the highest bit rate that I can? Uh, so, let me see. Okay. So I'll just transfer a perfect circle. 
one of their albums, it's going through, it's going to have to convert it, and then you can see it's 7%, whatever. And then it'll write all of them to there, and I'll be back to show you that it is indeed working, and I can play the songs on it. So just as it's finishing up, I want to go through... Um, so they did sell a smaller version of the adapter uh, that costs, I think, about 10 bucks, 7 to 10 bucks. That mine has a little PCB, so it takes up extra room. They sell a smaller, kind of more fragile version where it's just a ribbon cable and then the plastic uh, pin connector at the end. That would probably allow this original hard drive to fit with this rubber shock mount and not to add any extra thickness. Uh, but because I use a cheaper adapter, it'll work. It's pretty much crammed in there, so it's not going to move around, but there's not that much shock protection because I had to remove uh, this rubber connector or rubber shock mount. So this will be a little bit more fragile, and it looks like it's just finished, actually, uh, the transfer. So let me just eject this guy. So now it's creating a database. And you can see there that the album I just put on, A Perfect Circle, is actually on there. And I can play it, and you can see it's currently playing. Obviously, I can't hook up speakers and show you guys because, you know, copyright strikes and whatnot. But anyway, you can see that it is playing. I can uh, skip through. It's going through, and I can play. And yeah, everything is working except for the fact that this now has four times the memory and potentially better battery life, in fact, because it's using a more modern drive that's more efficient. And I, can, I can't even hear this. I can barely feel it uh, spinning or anything at all. Uh, I'm pretty sure the access, access times on these uh, newer drives are even better than these older ones, too. So, I mean, when this spooled the song, I barely felt anything. So it feels like this is solid state almost, but you just got to remember to be careful. Um, don't shake it or anything because it has still has a mechanical drive. It's just more efficient. Anyway, I wanted to show you guys um, this really, really neat... Uh, modification and I'm pretty sure no one has ever done this before well because no one has this <laughs> barely anyone has this mp3 player and or still even uses it anymore I just thought though because I had an extra hard drive lying around and I do listen to this with good good quality headphones um, you know just so that when I you know want to sit back and relax to music Sometimes I don't want to use an iPod. Sometimes I want to use something that has a little bit better sound quality. So this is a guy that I reach for then, and especially since how small it is. And this is actually quite a bit lighter, in fact, now than, uh, because it's it doesn't have that hard drive in there. So yeah, in all fronts, I would say this is the world's first uh, network Walkman Sony NWHD1 hard drive mega up upgrade, I guess you could call it. It's the world's first one, and as far as I know, the only one. And I would say it's a success on every front. <laughs> it's a lot lighter, has a lot more memory, uh, barely makes a noise, barely you can feel it, you know, almost, it, it feels like it's solid state, honestly. I, I can't even tell it's, it's spinning the disc or anything. And yeah, on every front, this is a win-win situation. So anyway, hopefully you guys liked the video. Um, sorry if I rambled on too long. I'll, I'll try to edit this video as short as I can. Anyway... Just want to say thank you guys for everything. If you uh, have any comments or questions, uh, you can like, uh, you know, like, comment, subscribe, whatever down below. Anyway, uh, I'll have the adapter listed in the description below with the links on how to purchase it, as well as the uh, other one. I'll just have like a general search for these adapters, and I will see you guys later. Bye.